Hi everyone, this is Pierrick from P2 Design. In this second part of the tutorial about creating Acumas necklace and not necklace, sorry for my English on the previous tutorial, we will um, go through the process to create the hair among the, the sphere and also how to duplicate the sphere and pose them around the bust. Um, the updated files will be available uh, in the comments of this video you will find the download links let's get started so here is what we end up with the former tutorial this sphere with the holes on the side and um, let's say correctly shaded even if it's not super advanced we have some um, cool shader here what we do need to do now is add uh, those little uh, fluffy fur appearing between the sphere uh, that might be the rope that is making the full necklace. To do so, we will first snap our 3D cursor to our sphere here, pressing Shift S and cursor to select it. Then we will add an icosphere and I will be using an icosphere here because um, as the faces are evenly uh, distributed it will give us nice uh, fluffy fur pointing in every direction because by default uh, the fur will be uh, pointing toward the normals you can see here so if you are using a uh, UV sphere sorry you can see that here we have a nice distribution but here it's looking pretty dense and this is not what we want so let's select our sphere enter edit mode pressing Z to see through uh, the current mesh S to scale we will scale it on the X axis, S and X, and move it to the frontier of the hole here. Okay. Then we will um, get rid of uh, the unwanted faces. We don't want fewer inside the sphere. It has no sense. It will increase the size of your mesh and the render time probably while we don't need it. So I'm using C to use this brush selection tool, select those vertices, pretty arbitrary, X vertices. And now I have my um, fuel system here, my emitter. I will scale it a little more, S, and we will give it a mirror modifier on the X axis here. So currently I can see anything, probably because my uh, mesh is not rotated. Oh no, because I was in edit mode. If you want to display what's happening in edit mode, you have to click this little icon here. And now I can see my mesh also, my mirror mesh also in edit mode. So with this done, we will apply the mirror modifier and we will uh, join this mesh to this one. So select it, then select the master mesh, the sphere, and control J. Okay, so now it's only one mesh here. When I go into edit mode, I also can edit this mesh. And we will create a vertex group that will allow us to set the air only on those things here. So we go, I have selected M, them, sorry, using the L key. So in with vertex selection, I go to the closest vertex, press L and it select the wall open mesh. Do so here. Then here in the vertex group, I will create a group called hair 
and assign those with a weight of one here. So now let's make some hairs grow on the sphere. So you go here into the particle system, create a new one. Let's call this sphere hairs and our setting hairs set. Uh, on the former, uh, on the first version I've done, I didn't take the time to name them because it's the only fuel system in this Blender scene. But whenever you're working in Blender, always try to give names to your object. Like here, I didn't give it a name, so it will be necklace and not necklace sphere. And get back here. We will will be using hair, not emitter. Emitter will emit um, particles like um, I will show you here. If I launch the animation, you see it's emitting particles that allow you to create uh, smokes, fire, or whatever you want. Here we want hair. And we can see that hairs are being emitted by the wall object. And that's why we have created um, a vertex group. If we go down here in vertex group, we can assign density length and the different values here of our roughness and shape of the hairs. So let's choose the first for density and now only my uh, previously made icosphere emit hairs. Okay, I will also use it for length, even if we won't see any difference, as we have set a value of one on those icosphere. But if I dive into um, weight paint mode, pressing Control Tab, and reduce drastically some of the values I'm sorry okay I got it I don't know why wait wait wait, wait. let's subtract it mm -hmm. okay here you can see the size of those um, hair being reduced but that's not what we want okay we'll just keep it as it was Control Shift Z. Oh, I was away here. Okay, to open the history history stack, just press Control Alt Shift Z. Control Alt Z. Sorry. And let's get back to here. So that's what that is what we used to have and what we want. So back to object mode the base hair the parent hair are a bit too long here let's put it to 0 0.5 i think that's okay maybe a bit long still 0 0.4 will be enough and now let's add more particles using the children here and we will select interpolated and the display value is what you act actually see. For one parent hair, we will have 10 children. And that's way enough. That's maybe a bit too much. And 100 is what will be currently rendered. So it will be way, way, way too much. I think 5 and 5 will be enough. <clears throat> We will give those uh, a little clumpy effect to have those kind of, of locks here. I don't know if you can see them. So to do so, we will use the clump ramp here and increase the value. And you can see the hairs getting uh, stretched on the top, on the, the end point of the strand. And we can give them a shape can see 
it's getting uh, inflating on the base or shrinked we want it to be little inflates and we will give them some variation using the length first we will slightly shorten them like this and add some threshold that will make some of them longer and shorter they will uh, recover their uh, original size that was here so that we have variation not something too artificial and also we will give them some roughness uh, the roughness uh, value is very very not subtle okay if you move it too strongly uh, it can make the ears go crazy so we'll just give them like 0 0.05 uh, value also for the size maybe reduce it a little and the one I prefer is the endpoint roughness that will make uh, the endpoint of the hairs uh, being uh, more rough okay and that will make it more natural more less I mean like evenly distributed that's the first thing now we will comb them to avoid uh, this clipping and try to to reach this uh, this thing so you go into the particle edit mode we will isolate the view uh, of our object here by pressing on the number pad the slash um, key now I'm in local view and by combing here okay it's like uh, the grab brush for sculpting i can move the hair so that they get out of the sphere hole before they get in our view space and we will also uh, flatten a little those ones give them some some kind of shape like this and like this as if there was another sphere pushing them so nothing really complex like hair designing character which is uh, really can be really difficult and if you want to do so can tremble as uh, released an awesome tutorial about this on how to shape uh, really advanced uh, character hairs but here it's uh, really a, a beginner beginner approach of the hair system so I'm happy with them there when I return into object mode I will see the result so I have something uh, rough and defined and that's what we want so now if I tap again tap again the slash um, key in my number pad i will get back to my original view press press shift z to enter render view mode and we can see our hairs has inherited the shader of the sphere and this is not what we want we want them to have a, a white color so let's have an eye to this render and we see that they are using the Acuma necklace I will rename it necklace wood uh, shader so what we need is to create another shader let's call them necklace hair here let's change it to necklace sorry for my English and return into the um, particle editor and select necklace here also what you can do to make things uh, more obvious in your uh, shader stack select the first one go into setting and you can can give your shader a viewport color and that is really really uh, uh, handy when you are working on multiple pieces that uh, help you to identify your shaders and we will do so for the necklace so it's actually white we'll just give them something like this just for the fun 
it might take some time to update on on thing like the the here so to force uh, the the update i enter edit mode and get back of edit mode okay so i will make a super simple air uh, shading because this is absolutely not a thing i'm comfortable with as i haven't uh, used it that much lately since cycles uh, i used to make some hair system on blender written also <laughs> now it's been few years i haven't used it so shift z to enter viewport shading i will make a square pressing ctrl b here we will enter the node editor I have my necklace hair shader selected, so I should find it here. Okay, I've pressed the dot button near the numpad to zoom on the object. That's really a nice thing. It works on every um, every menu. So even in the 3D viewport, as it will center the view on the current selection and reset all movement so that you will be able to rotate around the last thing you just zoomed in. So we have a simple diffuse BSDF shader. We will add shader air, hair, sorry, and we will duplicate it because it offers us a reflection shader and a transmission shader. The first one will deal with a glossiness of um, the hairs, while the second one will deal with uh, the transparency and the fact that the light is scattered through uh, locks of hairs. So I will keep the setup like by default. It often gives nice results. Uh, there are a lot of hair render, uh, rendering specialist around the place and I think you can find some advanced uh, tutorial about shading the hairs. Uh, I won't do it because I'm not uh, a specialist. So let's add the shader mix shader with a value of 50%. Okay. And then we will mix them because using uh, pure hair uh, shading is a bit strong and undefined and using um, mixing them with a simple diffuse shader uh, generally gives a better result like this and we will uh, keep it at 0 0.5 that's gonna be nice I think so now what we can do is give those some color variation so what we will use is uh, an input node hair info here. And you have uh, different um, entries. Is trend just allow you to select the strength. So currently uh, the world system. Intercept is the one we will be using. It uh, define the route to the uh, hand point of the hairs. So even here in viewport uh, rendering on this specific information we have something cool appearing and the thickness I believe I don't know how it works but maybe if you have a different air system or thing like this uh, with different uh, thickness you will have uh, also a black to white gradient among your object and tangent normal well it gives you uh, the normal direction of those hair i believe that can be really cool to make some animation of the hairs and give them some color or stuff like this or maybe for motion designer that could be a really interesting thing but we will use the intercept so let's add a commenter color ramp to have some control upon it select intercept go into the factor b spline to have a smooth gradient let's increase this to have a darker tip 
on this picture um, I think it's due to the lightning but it seems that the root of the of those strands is a bit uh, blue and I think it's only the lightning here we can see there is a blue reflection on the table really affecting this uh, let's use a simple uh, uh, gray brownish color so mix RGB here we will use something like this darkened not too saturated and something white let's see how it goes now okay we could also add some maybe some dark stuff on the end that could be interesting let's add another mix RGB here you can do this directly on the color ramp if you want but I prefer to separate it that's easier so here let's do it like this add another I added another cursor here I will turn it to black it will allow me to push it really really dark here and isolate the the end point of the of the hairs plug it here and let's try a very dark color and I can't really see it here factor maybe invert it nope Oh, that's strange. Oh, yes, I have it. But it's really subtle here. Okay. Let's move it a little back. Like this. And let's make this one a little more saturated. Don't make things too dark because uh, hair shaders um, really heat a lot of light and doesn't reflect it that much so uh, um, dark hairs will uh, look even darker okay so i won't plug it into the rbsdf colors because as a transmission i believe it works like a translucent bsdf and with those dark colors it will turn even darker and for the reflection we have white reflection we can use like for the wood um, a color curve correction with a really high um, correction of the of the color but i don't think it's really useful here let's see how it looks so for me it's way too dark on the root here make slightly brighter and make this pure white and move those tips a little further and the last thing we will add is add some transparency to the end point so here let's add a shader mix shader let's add a shader transparent and we will use this ramp that is um, isolating the the end of those um, of those strands duplicate it take the interception here and just move this a little further and make it a little smoother like this so the the tips will be more transparent and that's it so that's subtle but it really may uh, makes the the end of our strand a little more um, uh, subtle and for the final render uh, it will look more realistic i think most of the people do this uh, adding a transparent bsdf to to make the the end point really really um, subtle okay so that's it for the the hair shader here 
one thing I would like to show you about the strand here is the very last options about the thickness so here I'm pretty satisfied with the thickness of those um, strands but if you want to make it, them thicker you can increase uh, the scaling here that will increase both the root and the tip size so let's try 0 0.02 and it will be twice bigger we'll make it 0 0.05 so that you can see the difference more obviously okay so here it looks really bad and I will keep it at 0 0.01 as it was pretty satisfying and if you want to make those smoother so currently I don't know what is the rate of uh, curvature of the strand in the viewport but here in the option you can use B spline uh, it will uh, slightly increase the render time but it allows you to give more steps uh, to the curvature it's like subdividing uh, the current uh, the current sorry the current hairs so let's just use two okay i will zoom in and launch a test render and uh, we will uh, then start to um, work on the wool necklace. So here is the rendered result. It's pretty cool, actually. So let's dive into building the, um, the necklace. There are different ways to do it. First, we will use uh, the more common one and one of, in this case, I believe the most unrelevant one. We will uh, snap the cursor to the sphere, shift S cursor to selected and add a curve, a Bezier curve. Let's jump into top view, press tab to enter edit mode and Z to access wireframe mode. I will move this point, this point outward I will snap this one to uh, the cursor, shift S selection to cursor, and I will align this uh, vector to the X axis by scaling it on the Y axis and pressing zero so that it is scaled with zero value. S, Y, and zero, enter. Okay, so we will extrude this one one more time on the x-axis and let's say we are done with the length of our necklace and we will select the sphere and add an array modifier here and make sure it is um, upon the particle system the particle system should be always the latest a modifier in the stack so that every modifier are applied before the particle are uh, generated so in the array modifier by default it's uh, a relative offset so it's using the the sphere size uh, to make the next step with value of one on the x-axis so as our sphere is aligned with the the word that's fine Let's increase it a little to have some space between the sphere and I have some bug here. Let's try to put it maybe in another order. Okay, it doesn't matter really for the time being. So 1.05 seems to be nice. Let's duplicate it. Okay, I have really something buggy here with the particle system but that's fine <laughs> we won't use this technique and then we will um, parent those sphere to uh, the curve so let's try to select the curve i think i got this i will check it here in the outliner 
so the Bezier curve is currently selected. Control P to parent it with curve deform. And that's it. So now when I select the Bezier curve and edit it, it will allow me to give this uh, uh, thing a necklace shape. But the problem is that it will also affect the sphere. So let's just don't mind about the air system because it turns really buggy i don't know why and you see the sphere are totally deformed so it's really not relevant for our shape to use the curve directly you see it really turns buggy and this is not what we are looking for so let's just uh, delete this uh, bezier curve let's remove the array modifier let's remove the curve modifier that was automatically generated when we parented the sphere to the curve and let's try something else so there is another way to generate um, instances of an object on another on <laughs> another i don't know how to say it but there are other ways and we will see it now we need first to make sure that the object we will use to generate those instances have the same origin as um, the object to be duplicate duplicated because uh, it will turn buggy and <clears throat> you will have unexpected result if you don't do so and it will be hard to control uh, the whole thing then so shift s cursor to select it we will add a simple uh, cube so that uh, I can show you the result. We will scale it, control A, rotation and scale. And then I will parent the sphere to this cube. Control P, object. Okay, nothing happened. But now if you go into the object option here, you have this duplication stack where you can say, uh, if uh, we duplicate the children over the faces, over the, the verts, etc. So let's try faces. And now I have my uh, sphere appearing here. So if I select the sphere and enable again the particle system, it should appear here also. And <laughs> I don't know, when, don't know why it doesn't. Okay, it appears here in render view. But you can see that um, the orientation of our uh, our graphics here is uh, not exactly what we want. But for the time being, we were able to create instances not too buggy on an object. So let's try something else. Let's get rid of this. So it has lost its parent. Let's dive into top view. Let's add a circle. And here we have by default a value of uh, 32 vertices. Let's say we want like 18 or 16 uh, sphere toward uh, our wall necklace. So let's type 16. And we will go into edit mode and extrude uh, this uh, circle among the z-axis to create faces okay fine now let's just scale it as it should be to fit the necklace um, size let's parent our sphere to the necklace set parent to the object and here in the option let's use face okay so now they look really small because because i have scaled this uh, necklace shape into object mode and we should have done this into edit mode so that the scale would have been one but we can apply the scale Control a rotation and scale and now the sphere keep 
their original size. So we can uh, reduce the size of the children here and it will be reduced along the necklace. We want a little space between those, like this. Okay, and now if I enter uh, render view mode rapidly, I have something uh, looking like our uh, necklace. So again, you can see that this time the sphere are, are pointing downward. Um, I was not able to figure out uh, how this works. So uh, let's have some tests. Okay, to figure out where is our uh, face, let's select the object, go to the node editor, select the uh, base uh, shader, and select the map where we have our head here. It is selected, okay, yellow line around it. So now if I turn to texture mode, I can see it and that will help us. So let's try to rotate it along the X axis. And you can see everything is really <laughs> uh, rotating strangely. Okay, so this is not a good method. Let's first rotate this on the Y axis 180 degrees. Okay, Alt Z to enter uh, this view mode. And let's try to figure out what's happening here. So I will enter edit mode and rotate our sphere like 90 degrees uh, this way. So rotation x 90, ah, it was rotation x minus 90. So now my faces are in the good way. They are pointing toward uh, the normals. And I believe the way it works is that uh, it's using the z axis as the normal uh, direction. I will enable it here and increase the size. Okay. Ah, yeah, that's it. So even my normals were inverted, it doesn't matter here. But it's the minus. Okay. So you have to figure out the direction between uh, the normal direction of uh, the older of the children and the current children. So in our case, uh, if the Z is pointing mm -hmm. here, I believe and the Y axis is inverted on this. So you have to play a little around with it, but now we are happy with this. And what we want to do now is to um, place our necklace around this neck. So for the time being, it's a bit too big. Let's scale it down. And also what we can do is to isolate this. Let's put it under our backdrop. The problem is that if I move it, it will also be moved from this space. And if I move this, it will be exactly the same. Okay, I can't even move it. Why? Okay, you see. But if you move this into edit mode, its origin point won't move. And what um, Blender used to set the position of those, even if I can't really understand the orientation, the position is the difference between both origin of this object and this object. And in our case, both origin are in the same place. I will just turn uh, the view to simplify with zero subdivision to have a, and 0 0.1 particles to have a, a better feedback. So if I go into edit mode, move it 
to the top here and move it back here okay I have my necklace here that is available and the cool thing about this about using this is that if you use a curve modifier to modify the parent here as it's using the face to generate those it won't um, distort the sphere the sphere deformation is based on the global deformation of this object if i scale it on the x-axis you will see them uh, being stretched okay but as it is uh, using a curve it won't be a problem so we won't do it here because i probably will plan to create a rigging tutorial uh, for the necklace okay and it might not be the best way and it will be covered in the next tutorial about creating a belt and, and things like this but for the time being what we can do is first uh, let's try to scale the whole thing so that it uh, fits uh, the neck so i believe um, this size might be good we will also slightly reduce this one okay let's say that's enough and we will use a simple shape key to give our necklace a shape that will allow us to keep this basic um, basic uh, shape and make some tests so i go here into the vertex option into the mesh option sorry shape key we will get out of edit mode add one which is the basis which is our current shape we don't touch it it will be used as a comparison point for the next shape key because a shape key works this way it takes a vertices and say okay it moves this way in the z this way in the y and, and and this value in the x compared to the basis the original and you have here the blend uh, beneath the blend the and the, um, the shape key that is used to mm, generate the new coordinates so let's uh, use it so in edit mode with this case selected it means i'm editing the shape key here if i go in edit mode here it means i'm uh, editing the base mesh if you want so let's select this and just with alt o to enable uh, the proportional editing i will move it move this down with a higher radius i think that the necklace might be a bit too big still but let's try it and as you can see as i move the the vertices i will get rid of this so the this bust will be available in the downloading uh, file and i think it was already all available with my first necklace on, in the first video okay let's do it like this we just want to uh, avoid clipping here because it will look really really bad if so okay like this now this one should be falling uh, like that maybe I, I need those to be slightly bigger to avoid clipping between the the spheres yeah i'm saying sphere because uh, i was saying bolts <laughs> in the former tutorial I, i'm not sure uh, pure uh, english people will appreciate the term bolts here <laughs> because wrapping bolts around your neck might be pretty painful i believe sorry for this if there are any under 18 people <laughs> watching this i'm sorry just call your lawyer and let me know okay so 
I won't spend uh, the wall here trying to fix this, but you have the, the ID, okay? 